So music is one of the most beautiful things in our lives. Yet somehow, Islam managed to mess even this up. We have a bunch of people, Muslim scholars, that actually claim that music is haram, forbidden. I have a video of a young lady who talks about the struggle she went through to give up music and how she's given up music now for six months. But there was a part of me that felt like everyone listens to it. Like, I just, is it really that bad? You know, like everyone listens to it and it's not doing that much damage to me. But because it brings me so much pleasure, letting it go would be like a big struggle in life. It would, it would really, it would take out a lot of life for me. You know, to stop doing something that I know brought me a lot of joy. She talks about the struggle, how painful it is, how what she f was feeling when she was going through this, and the whole journey. We're going to go through this video together. I'm going to give you my reflections. I personally went through the same thing when I was in my 20s. I gave up music. I broke all my music CDs, and I listened to Quran instead. And eventually, it took me over the decade before I started listening to music again. I did cheat from time to time listening to Islamic nasheed. Some of them had music, some of them had limited instruments. For most of that 15 years, I wasn't listening to music until probably close to the end. What impact did that have on me? Why did I do it? And why is she doing it? Let's get into it. I'm your friendly ex-Muslim. I'm a former religious fundamentalist, you could say, Muslim that has left Islam and I'm now reflecting on my journey and where I ended up. Let's take a look and see what this young lady has to say. Now, a disclaimer is this lady, she's a wonderful lady. She's trying to do the right thing to be a good person, to be a good Muslim, to share with her viewers, to encourage them to also be good Muslims. The point of this video is not to criticize her but to see how the religion influences and affects people and the sacrifices it makes you do, right? The type, the level of sacrifice it instills in you and for what? Now, if someone would say, you know, religion helped me to give up smoking or alcohol, well, that's a good thing. But music? How is this helping humanity? Music is one of the most beautiful, wonderful, enjoyable things in life. We, we're hardwired to react to music. Even babies react and they dance to music. Even some animals, like some parrots, can, can bob to the tune. It's very deep inside us. Whether you have instruments or not, that's another story. But the fact is that music is something so intrinsic to us humans. It's such, an exp it's such a big part of our humanity. To just give it up is... is actually quite painful and that's what she says let's take a look and see what she says today's topic it's very near and dear to my heart it's actually the topic that i first talked about when i made this podcast like the first episode was me talking about leaving music um and i wanted to make that episode about music because i feel like there was absolutely nothing on youtube nothing on different platforms for Muslims talking about music and for non-Muslims. I mean, I feel like this is a topic that's very dynamic and that a lot of people can take benefit from because it's not even about music. It's about depending on things, depending on things that we don't have control over, you know, and for us to be strong minded and for us to achieve amazing heights in life, we have to learn to be independent of many things you know, including certain stimuli. And I think music is one of those things that is is extremely, it's not even like normalized, it's more than normalized. It's like, it's a part of people's day, regardless of whether they like it or not. You know, that's what music is at this point. And I see a lot of people turning to it all the time uh, for mood boosters, um, for being in the car, just in, in any situation whatsoever. If there's no music, it's boring. You know, that's a lot. That's how a lot of people's days are. I remember when I tried to. And this is actually one of the benefits of music. It's to pass the time. If you're doing something mundane, if you're like folding your clothes or doing the laundry. One of one of my favorite times to listen to music is when I'm cooking. It just makes the experience that much more enjoyable. And um, 
it's funny how she's saying that it's it's more than normalized yeah it's it's <laughs> it's pretty much part of who we are right um but you'll see a lot of like self you know post hoc rationalization going on where it's like you know this is something that is beneficial to become independent of and it's almost like she's trying to find a way to make herself feel better for doing it because there's no obvious benefit like let's be real there's no obvious benefit to giving up music right like if it wasn't for the dogma no one would do it to quit music it was a very very hard struggle it was a struggle to the point where i would have these moments where i'm panicking like i need something i i genuinely need something to calm me down like I need a stimulus right here right now and I would go on YouTube and I'd be like why is music bad like out of angst out of contempt absolutely it was so awkward me being completely angry and just I just in need of music and like angrily typing music is it really haram is it really bad you know like I just wanted a way out and I didn't I didn't even like there were no videos obviously for the questions that I had. All of them were coming more so from the legalistic aspect. They will bring up the hadith over and over, which we all know and we all heard about music. And there would be no emotion in those kinds of videos. It would be pure information, like just, they would state it as a fact, but they would not say it or explain it in a way where it would be empathetic to people like me. So, you know, hearing this is obviously quite painful. Um, I feel quite bad for her that this is what she put herself to. And again, we're not talking about, you know, going on like, you know, some intermittent fast for like a month, right, to gain better health. We're not talking about waking up and going for a jog, again, a mental, uh, physical thing. We're not talking about, you know, doing journaling or meditating which is it could be painful too We're talking about giving up music and it's like you know she was like sad about it she was struggling i just you feel bad because like the sacrifice for what you know this is this is why i wanted to share this video to help people to understand this is the effect of islam of religion on people it has this effect that it'll make them give up things that they don't need to give up like like people who went to search in, in desperate need of something to let them know that what you're feeling is normal, you know? Uh, all it was is that music is haram, point blank, period. Just go on with your life. But there was a part of me that felt like everyone listens to it. Like, I just, is it really that bad, you know? Like, everyone listens to it, and it's not doing that much damage to me. But because it brings me so much pleasure, letting it go would be like a big struggle in life. It would, it would really, it would take out a lot of life for me, you know, to stop doing something that I know brought me a lot of joy. But that's why I want to make these videos. So she's right up. I mean, I don't, I don't even feel like I need to add anything to this video. Just watching this video and hearing her share what she's saying you can understand like what she went through and what millions of Muslims, young Muslims go through. And I'm going to say something else here. I have a strong feeling, I could be wrong, that this is not coming from her parents. This is coming from Islamic teachings online. This is coming from the community, the mosque. It could be coming from her family too. Although like in my situation, just like in many other young Muslims I know, a new, they were doing it to themselves. It wasn't even their parents. You know, sometimes their parents were strict on this. Sometimes they weren't. Most Muslims in the world do listen to music. And she's going to talk about that. Let's keep listening. Because I know the demographic that watches me. I know the kinds of Muslims that watch me. And I know how much of a struggle cutting music is. Because music has become something that's everywhere. All the time. And it's like, it's, it's weird if there's no music. If you enter a restaurant, it's weird if there's no music. If you go to the gym, it's weird there's no music. Like, it's just weird to have silence right now at this time that we're in. And I don't understand it. It's honestly, to me, I think it's sad. <laughs> uh, I had to chuckle a bit at this one. Um, 
Like, I don't usually put music in my videos, not because it's halam, because I'm having a conversation with the audience. And some people put music in the videos as background music. It drives me crazy because sometimes that music is annoying. Like, I like speaking to people like this without music in the background. I mean, if you do it well, you can put certain segments of music that would actually make the, the video more dramatic and more interesting. But like there's times and places where you have music and you don't have music in a restaurant or whatever, like you're there to enjoy yourself. <laughs> why, would, why would it be sad? It's not sad. There's nothing wrong with it. Anyways. That this is the direction that we're taking as a whole society. That there needs to be music everywhere, that's honestly depressing. So when I, I angrily... There doesn't need to be music anywhere, we like it. We typed, why is music haram or is music really haram or how, like, I'm struggling without music. I would literally type that into the YouTube search bar. Let that sink in. Okay, that's a next level of desperation. That's next level. And... When I saw that there was nothing that would satisfy my search, that would satisfy the questions I had, it became clear to me that I had to embark on this journey alone. And I wish that people in this situation would actually start reflecting and wondering at the bigger questions, why would God want this from me, right? And, and she's going to come up with some reflections on that later where she tries to and we've already heard some hints of that how she tries to self-justify you know post hoc rationalize yeah it must be because we're dependent on this and she's going to talk about it. i'll let her talk about it but now she's going to talk about how alone she is in this journey it, it's true even among muslims this is a very minor minority opinion not necessarily minority opinion but minority implement it um it's the very religious muslims the people like myself and the people like my some of my family members that some of my family, most of my family is very liberal, they don't care, but um, there are the minority that don't listen to music and it becomes difficult. I, I even know some people would go into restaurants and they tell the restaurant, can you turn off the music? <laughs> oh my God. Um, and it's difficult because there's music in movies, there's music in elevators, there's music everywhere. So if you want to avoid music, it's damn tough. And I talked about this in the first episode, giving something up for the sake of Allah. I talked about how I felt so alone in this journey. When I gave up music, I feel like, I felt like I was the only one. And I would try to get a friend or two in on it, you know, and I'd explain to them, like, we're doing this, this, this. And and when I, when I told some friends, they were in complete shock. I was like, they would be like, oh, you usually wear your headphones in the gym. What's going on? I'm like, yeah, I quit music. And they would be dumb. They would be like dumbfounded. They're, then they're like, what? What did you just do? Like, why would you do that? And I would be like, like. We're not all the same. Don't be so dramatic. Like, chill out, dude. We're all trying new things here, okay? Leave me alone. So when I saw that kind of... So um, she just gave another good point. It's well known that when you go to the gym and you don't have your music on your headphones, it's like it's like a struggle. <laughs> it's like you can't lift. It, the music motivates you to do more at the gym and to make the most of your workout, right? So... And uh, usually gyms have music playing anyways. You can't avoid it like that unless you go to like a private like apartment building, condo, gym or something, right? Kind of opposition from friends even. I felt like I, w like I it became clear, crystal clear to me like, okay, I'm going to be alone in this. I'm going to be completely alone in this journey and that's okay. That's fine. Because it reminded me of the idea of jihad and nafs, you know, struggling with yourself struggling for the sake of Allah for yourself because we always think that this life is rainbows and sunshine but it's honestly this life as a whole is supposed to be full of struggles it's not rainbows and sunshines like we can lie to ourselves and tell ourselves that it's okay there can be a lot of things that we can we enjoy in our day-to-day -day lives and that they fulfill us when in reality they could be doing harm and you don't even know so this is um I kind of feel this is a point against her, not for her. When she says, you know, most people think her life is rainbows and sunshine. I don't know anyone who thinks that, to be honest. And even if we all agreed life is a struggle, this is one of the things that makes life better. That makes it, makes that struggle a little bit more bearable. That makes life worth living. I mean, to some extent, this makes life worth living. 
we're not talking about giving up something that's harming you. We're just giving up something because God said so. You don't, I mean, I'm not saying don't have any forms of pleasure throughout the day. That's not a normal way to live. But when it becomes that all your day is filled with is pleasure and that's all you seek, yani, it just, it feels empty. This is obviously taking it to an extreme. No one's spending the whole day seeking pleasure when they listen to a little bit of music at the gym. So not really a good point. Life feels empty because it feels like you're chasing a feeling, you know? And when you chase a feeling, feelings are very temporary and they can change within a split second all the time. So depending on some kind of feeling that you want and trying to get that from music, especially... I think that's you're putting yourself in a very bad situation and you're and you're making yourself dependent on something that like I said before is not going to always be there for you. What this video is going to be mostly about is how my life has been without music. Life without music, basically the title of this video. But my life without music recently and it ha it has been months actually. It hasn't been a short time. It's been maybe 5-6 months without music. I don't even know where to start. There's so many aspects to my life that have changed completely. But the first thing that I want to say before I say anything else, and if you listen to this and you exit out of this video, it will be enough. What I'm about to say right now is that the changes didn't come immediately after cutting music. I had to, I had to endure literally mental pain through the first like three, four months of cutting. And... In that time period, I was always so torn from the inside. I always felt like, am I making the right decision? Because this is a big step. Because in Islam, as Muslims, it's hard to, when you go forward, at least try not to go backwards. You know, when you're making, when you're taking a big step, like waking up for Fajr, that's like, that's almost like you're saying, okay, if I'm taking this step, that's it. I have to start waking up for Fajr. You know, you're not going to be perfect all the time. Of course, you're going to miss some days, but... You have to realize that, okay, this change is going to be hopefully permanent, you know. It's interesting that through this entire video, we are seeing a struggling, suffering, pained, tortured soul that was, you know, she's been trying to self-justify, to explain to herself, to look up things, why is this haram? And to try to make sense of it, and this is a problem. This is this is a big sign that the religion is not from God. I had the same exact challenges with the divorce law in Islam. It didn't make sense to me how divorce is just you say talak to some to your to your spouse or divorce or whatever, and if you do that over th over three times over the period of months, you are permanently divorced unless she goes and sleeps with another man and then divorces and then gets divorced by him and then you can get to, it's very weird and i struggled and i struggled to make sense of this and i couldn't make sense finally after leaving islam it all made sense to me this is not from god it's made up obviously it doesn't make sense <laughs> it was just badly designed it was just a stupid system and we're not seeing someone that's like oh look i gave up music my life is so much better now i feel like you know the best and you know and and it just keeps coming back down to oh this is a sacrifice i'm making this is a sacrifice this is a she's going through this torture willingly and she it's it's going to reach an inflection point where things change let's see what she has to say but just keep just keep in mind that like so far this is not sounding great she's not selling it at all really well that's that's the goal we want this to be permanent you know and this is only done by the will of allah we can't we can't take it for granted like allah could take it away at any time in our lives and we might go backward but know that if you go backward in something like you stop listening to music and then you go back know that that is it's hard to wear this i feel like if i word this incorrectly it will make a lot of people go angry but know that that is a form of punishment from allah not oh my goodness oh. um like lady that is not a punishment from allah religious adherence goes up and down people get religious and get less religious and they get more religious and get less it's not a punishment from allah like 
have some like vision, have some like, look at the big picture. You tried something, it didn't work for you, so you don't do it anymore, right? Be flexible, that's your life, this is your life. Like, it's not like you just gotta get more and more and more religious, right? Go from no hijab to hijab to niqab, you know, to, to like staying at home, not working, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you don't need to only go in one direction, right? Even if you do believe in God, even if you do believe in Islam, you don't have to just keep getting more and more and more and more and more fanatical. Because wh- how would you end up then? Like, just think about where that where that's leading to. Always, but in most cases, because if we all think about it, we want to get closer to Allah. So, taking steps backwards, what do you think that signifies? What do you think that means? You know, and it's fine to come to terms with yourself, and it's fine to be angry at the fact but you have to take action like it, there's no such thing as what was my train of thought there's no such thing as this is not my doing like i'm not the one responsible for going backwards no there is something wrong with what you're doing if you are going backwards and it's it's a hard truth it's a hard don't get me wrong it's a truth that literally stings in the heart but it's a necessary truth because it's the only truth that's going to make you change it kind of feels like she's locked herself into this in the sense that she's like, oh, this was so hard to do, but now I'm stuck with it because I can't go backwards because Allah is punishing me. Um, I think this is all a problem of your own doing, right? The, the whole thing is a situation you put yourself into because you're trying to be a good Muslim. And it doesn't sound like it's doing you any good, I'm sorry to say. That's the only thing I really, really, really want the viewer of this video or the listener of this podcast to understand is that the change did not come immediately the change took more than half of the time i was on this journey okay only recently have i started to taste the sweetness of life without music and and reaching that point in your life is it's freeing but it's tough it's difficult because you're voluntarily giving something up that you know made you happy but then we can argue that that wasn't real happiness, but it gave you pleasure in the moment. When I went to the gym every single day, the only thing I looked forward to was my playlist. I said that before. My playlist was the only thing that I was in love with and I just wanted to repeat over and over and over every single day. And listening to all of that stuff, listening to all the songs that I curated on a playlist, it made me go, life is so good. Like It made me always think, Life is just so easy when you have music, you know? It just feels so good all the time. Until I realized that that was a literal lie that I was feeding to myself. Feeling good all the time, feeling like there isn't a struggle that's gonna come in front of you. Life is not supposed to be feeling good all the time. When you think your life is going very smoothly and very easy and like you have nothing to struggle for, you really need to check yourself. You can definitely have your moments of joy while also having struggles. Like, I have my struggles as a parent. I have my struggles going to the gym. I haven't gone to the gym in a while and it's killing me. I have my struggles in being, um, you know, like a good employee at my job and to grow. All of those struggles continue whether or not you listen to music. It's like all or nothing perspective here. It's the truth because Allah tests those who he loves so if you feel like you're not being tested if you feel like you're letting things slide you're letting things pass and you're like getting really comfortable in this life know that you're not in the group that you as a Muslim you want to be in I feel I feel bad to hear this because it, it almost means that like having a good life is a bad thing it's like God wants you to suffer in, in reality, it's probably more along the lines of if you're suffering, you're, this will make you feel better. Have this religion cookie, right? This cookie will make you feel better. God loves you. To look at it the other way is, is just like bad. It's like God wants you to suffer. And if you're not suffering, that means you're a bad Muslim. I'm, I hate to say this, but this does not feel like or sound like a cult. This sort of thinking, this sort of mentality. You don't want to be in that group because being tested by Allah is an honor. Being given all of these tests, just even 
thinking that you might disobey Allah and that it makes you feel guilty, that's an honor. Allah doesn't give it to everybody. And so if you do something wrong and you can feel a type of guilt, you can sense something is wrong, that's one of the biggest mercies of Allah. And that's legitimately how I viewed music ever since. You know, those four months where I did not taste the sweetness of anything, you know, they say that when you cut music, you can taste the sweetness of Dean even more. But in the first four months, it was truly a test for me because I couldn't taste either. You know, I was keeping away from music and I was trying to listen to all of these, you know, Quran and Nasheeds and all of these things, but I just could not taste the sweetness of it. So I was, I felt like my soul was just not being fed ever. You know how you have your mind and you have your body and you feed both, but I was not feeding my soul. And the soul is the most important thing because it gives you the will to live. If your soul is not fed correctly, you wake up every day questioning whether you want to be here or not. You know, questioning why am I even here? And that's how I felt in the first four months because there was, there was not the pleasure either. I, I've said this multiple times, but do you notice a theme here? That life sucks, life was shit, life is horrible, I was suffering, I was tortured, I was... She's, she didn't say depressed, but she did say I didn't taste the sweetness of religion or music. Obviously, music's gone now. It's, it's like this thing has made her life worse. But anyway, she's going to tell us how it got better. So I'm, I'm curious to hear how it got better. And I felt... I felt so deprived. I felt like there was no sweetness in any, anything. I felt like if this is life, I don't want to be here. I don't because this is not fun. But that's when I persisted. I kept on that path. You know, I was close to going back to music so many times in like the third or fourth month because I was not seeing the aftermath, which was supposed to be positive. But I stayed on that path. I knew that the struggle is worth it because one day I'm going to put on Quran and there's a teardrop that's going to come from my eye because it will have entered my heart when there was one's music playing. Okay, <clears throat> I can keep going. This is easy. Um, I re realized recently, one day in the third or fourth month of cutting music, because I wasn't feeling anything, it wasn't touching my heart, I just stopped listening to either. So my car rides were full of silence. They were full of nothing. Um, but then recently, and this is very, very recent, I put Quran for the first time in a long time. And I could feel feel things I could never feel before. Yeah, and I could feel the words seep into my heart. It's like, you know how a waterfall just like pours onto a river and it's just so swift and it all just goes together so beautifully? That's how it felt. That's how it felt. Before when I put on you know, I would put Surat al-Baqarah and I would try to just like internalize the ayat. I would try to let them enter my heart. But there was no, there was, there was something blocking my heart. Like the, the passageway to enter my heart, there was something blocking it. You know? And I, I would try to let these words have meaning. That I would try to have emotion when I hear these words, but I couldn't. I couldn't. And I was like, something is wrong with me. You know, I didn't attribute it to the music. I was like, something is wrong with me. Especially when I wasn't feeling it after I'd cut music. Because there was still something there. There was still something there that was blocking the message of the Quran from entering. And recently when I... So when she talks about, you know, Surah Baqarah and listening to Surah Baqarah, the reason why it doesn't have a connection... I mean, let's be real. Stories of Moses going up a mountain and the calf and this and that. And, you know, the people, the Beni Israel were ordered to, to kill themselves because they disobeyed God. 
and like a piece of meat that was thrown on the the dead guy to come back to life and like you know the mountain was raised above them like it's like a superman story or something like do you expect to be like in tears over this like probably 2000 year old sorry to say fairy tale how would this have any impact on a 21st century human driving in a car going to the gym young lady you know who needs to graduate from university has get started on her family life probably is what she wants you know all of these things she's trying to do maybe start a career i don't know talking about some some like you know nonsense like that obviously she's not going to have a connection to you but she's going to actually admit what i was thinking all along she's going to admit the real reason why this is having an impact on her and it's deprivation she's deprived herself so much that this mundane like nonsense is now having an impact on her because she's been starving and she's going to say that just listen to what she says it's it's almost shocking that she admitted it I could feel parts of it enter not all of it i don't think i reached that level yet and i pray that we all reach that level but i could feel parts of it entering my heart and it just felt like i felt like i was feeding my soul for the first time in a long time do you know how when you're like famished and you just you want to eat anything you would eat slices of bread to just stop your hunger that's how it felt that's how the words of the quran felt when they entered my heart in that car ride i felt like i was finally being fed a slice of bread I'm so sorry to say this is the worst point ever. Actually, it's the best point ever because it it acknowledges what I was thinking, which is you know, you get some scraps, right? Some leftovers, some some leftover food that's been sitting there for 2 or 3 days, but you're starving. Even a can of dog food, you'd eat the dog food. You'd even eat insects. This is when the Quran became valuable to you because it's This is a reason like we have all these people trying to force themselves to like something that's not actually good. That's not actually wholesome. That's not actually beneficial in any way. It's just they they were just told it's beneficial. They were just told this is good for you. You need to like this. You should like this. Why what's wrong with you? Why are you not crying when you hear the Quran? Didn't the story of Moses going up to the mountain and getting back and smashing the calf and all of these things they didn't have an impact on you they're crying like what's wrong something must be wrong with you what kind of muslim are you so now you've starved your brain of stimulation to the point where any little thing is basically having impact on you even though it's not valuable after a month of not eating after months of not eating and it's something i can't really explain it's something i can only feel but to explain it and to put it into words is it would not be done justice because it's something that you need to feel to understand and there's this common idea within islam that quran and music cannot reside within the same heart trust me i have tried i have tried countless times over I was always the one to say actually that's not true I can make it happen and then I'd listen to music at the gym and I'd put Quran in the car rides and the the car rides when I listened to Quran I couldn't pay attention even there was no paying attention whatsoever you know I was just thinking if I put it long enough for as many times as I can it will eventually enter my heart but you know astaghfirullah but as i was playing music at that i mean playing the quran in my car at that time my mind and my heart were like they were connected with strings back to the music that i was listening to at the gym so my heart was connected to the music i was listening to and not even paying any attention to the quran that was playing in the car to stand in front of allah and have that be the case you know It's just again the whole thing with this Quran the whole reason why we have people memorizing the Quran reading the Quran all of this stuff is because the Quran had to be memorized in order to be preserved because people didn't write very often they would write little scraps here and there and we're talking about an illiterate society 
that's the only reason why Quran was being repeated and said over and over again. Imagine God actually made this revelation in such a way that you'd had to give up music in order to, to like it have an impact on you. Why would that be the case? And this reminds me of the fact that Muhammad felt that his Quran was comp competition to the poets and even had the poets killed, right? They, they were like competition to him. So like when they were t accusing him of telling stories of old, satirul ovalin, he was mad at that. He didn't like that. He didn't like to be, you know, he, he also considered the soothsayers and the, you know, like astrologers to be competitors to his revelation. Right? They were talking to jinns, he's talking to Allah <laughs> and angels, right? So that's competition to him. You, had to, you, know, you got to go back to the source and you got to go back to the history and to see why this thing evolved the way it did, right? This is what it is at the end of the day. And the amount of effort she's putting in trying to be a good Muslim, it just, it just breaks my heart that all of this is for nothing. All of this is not helping her in any way. It's not making her happy. And finally, we're getting to the point where she's seeming to get some benefit out of it. But like, imagine that's what God wanted from you in the first place was to like give up entirely listening to any beat whatsoever, or any sort of song or just so that like, what kind of God would demand that much from us? It's just like wild. It's right. Not to mention there's religious Islamic songs too. So what would you say about that? Like we'll be asked about that. And we'll be like, no, I was listening to Quran. I swear I was listening. But your heart wasn't listening to it. Your your heart was in a completely different realm. You were physically there, but your heart wasn't. And you can't lie to yourself because you can feel it. And you know the difference of when your heart is present or it isn't present when the Quran is playing. You know that when the Quran touches the heart, whether you like it or not, you shed a tear because it's touching your heart. So we can continue a little bit longer, but I think you got to the point. The main point, the obvious point was so much suffering, so much pain and misery just to give up music. For what reason? Because Islam says so, according to some Muslim scholars, that definitely most people listen to music. Most Muslims listen to music even. So this is a tiny minority. But to give up something so intrinsic, so beneficial, so so much a part of a humanity and you can see the amount of suffering she went through it just makes no sense in conclusion obviously the point of this video was not to attack her but to look at the arguments and the points she's making and to share and reflect on how this religion hijacks everything good in life and takes away from the the beneficial parts of you, of our lives and tries to make it so that the only thing you do is to be a follower of that religion and to completely submit yourself, like it says in the Quran, and to just leave everything else behind. Anything that brings you joy has to be within the context of this very rigid religion. Definitely not something that I want for humanity. Thankfully, my kids can now listen to music because I no longer follow this religion. They don't have to give that up. They can enjoy that. And to everyone else who's struggling with music, I wish you the best. I think you don't need to give it up. Maybe think about why would God want this from you? Why? How does that make sense? And uh, thanks for watching. This video is sponsored by you. If you like this video, please consider joining the Patreon below. Thank you to my subscribers. Leave a comment. Let me know if you yourself went through this sacrifice. If you gave up music as well and what it felt like and where you are today with your journey. Thanks for watching. This is your friendly ex-Muslim Abdullah Samir signing out.